Hey there guys, have you ever wanted to use a hammer and be Avatar The Last Airbender? Well, I got five tips for you. Here are five tips to play the hammer catalyst in PvE and PvP. Here we go. So the first tip that I'd like to show you in relation to the hammer catalyst is going to be your hammer three abilities. All of these abilities have no cast time, so you can quite literally pop them anytime. But what's important to note is how long they last and the benefits that they have. So for example, when we pop flame wheel, we have it circling, it's going around for 10 seconds, and now it's ticking down. We go over to water attunement, we hit icy coil, refreshes flame wheel. Now we have both of them, and then so on, and so on. We could have all four of them up at one given time. And then we cast our last one. When we cast Grand Finale, they all disappear. The buffs will only last for that 15 second duration, and then we will have to recast them again. So theoretically, you could have a total of these buffs up for roughly about a minute, a minute duration. I'm keeping an eye on their timers so that once I get close to the end, I hit the grand finale, get them all off, and then I'm going through and stacking these up as quickly as I can. The last thing I'll say about these circling spheres is that the duration is reduced in PvP down to about eight seconds. Keep that in mind. The next tip that I'd like to talk about is actually going to be about your Jade Sphere and what ores you're putting down. I have enough energy to deploy my Earth Sphere. I lay it down, and then my next finisher I jump through grants me a frost aura, not a magnetic aura. No matter what field you have down to jump through or blast through as a hammer catalyst, it is always going to choose whatever the leap is. Whatever the finisher is, is the aura that you're going to get. Set down my lightning aura, spinning around, fire aura, earth shield, jump through it, frost shield so regardless of what field is down on the floor below you even though it might be through an earth jade sphere field you're still going to get a shocking aura versus anything else my third tip is going to be again about the jade sphere but specifically how you can utilize it to pull off some surprising combos so the jade sphere has zero cast time meaning you can cast it in an instant but you could also do it while you were animating for something else for example, while I'm going for a molten end, I can lay down a fire field mid-air to guarantee the combo hit. Same thing for our ground pound and our earth sphere. Ground pound, earth sphere. Gotta heal so I don't die. Being able to be mid-animation for a combo finisher and laying down the field to finish it has a bunch of practical use. Also, quick tip, when you're animating for a ground pound or any type of slam or anything, you can actually cast lightning flash in the middle of it. My fourth tip is going to be the specific ores that you can get when you are playing Hammer Catalyst. To get Fire Aura, there's only really two ways that you can use it. This is going to be Grand Finale while you are in Fire Attunement, or using Molten End in a combo field. And it doesn't matter what the combo field is, you'll still be able to get that Fire Aura, just as long as you hit it. <laughs> Next, to get Frost Aura, you can use the Grand Finale in Water Attunement. You can use Crashing Font, and again, these are all through any type of combo field that there is. And then, of course, you can use Cleansing Typhoon. Shocking Aura is the only one that is a little bit tougher. You can, of course, use the Grand Finale within any combo field to get yourself a Shocking aura but the other way is through shock blast now in pve this is fairly easy because the targets will more, more likely than not be easy to telegraph where they are going but in pvp it's actually very difficult unless you're standing right on top of the target arguably the shocking aura is the most difficult one to actually land and of course with earth attunement the only way that you can get a magnetic aura is either going to be using grand finale or a ground pound in a combo field and my last tip for Hammer Catalyst is going to be on the way that you build the Hammer Catalyst. Now, the majority of your damage isn't going to come through power, just as a majority of your damage isn't going to come through condition damage. It actually benefits to have a mix of both. So Earth, of course, gets you a bunch of bleeding stats, but both of their abilities do a fair amount of damage. Fire Attunement is always going to have a lot of burning damage. All of its abilities cause burning save for Molten End. But what's important to note is that even though that these are dealing quite a bit of condition damage, the strike damage isn't all that bad. 
Surging Flames is a base strike damage of 1200, and then even for Molten End, it has a base damage of 1300. Water Attunement, of course, has a focus on chilling and healing and cleansing conditions, which is important, cleansing Typhoon. And of course, Air Attunement is vulnerability, is their big thing, vulnerability and stuns. It's important to note that your damage isn't gonna come from any one specific source, because you also have to remember that your circulars are actually applying conditions to targets. Flame Wheel is doing burning, Icing Coil is applying vulnerability, Crescent Wind is applying weakness, and then Rocky Loop is applying bleeding. So just keep that in mind is that your focus shouldn't be on any one given stat. Honestly, in an open world situation, even even in some PvE, PvP situations, I would even suggest having a good mix of both condition damage and power. So those are my five tips for playing the Hammer Catalyst in PvE and PvP. If you're interested, I have a Hammer Catalyst PvP guide right here that you can watch, help you get into smacking people around with the elements. Aside from that, have a wonderful day. Talk to you guys soon.